If you're new to genealogy, or you're just coming back to it after taking a break, or maybe you're just looking for a new place to search, I'm going to show you how to get started with an affordable website that is packed with genealogical information. It is called archives.com. I'm Lisa Louise Cook, and this is Genealogy Gems. And the folks at archives.com got in touch with me and they wanted me to make a video and just kind of share what I think about their website. So full disclosure, they are sponsoring this video. However, they have no clue what I'm going to say. You know, I've been podcasting for over 17 years and doing videos here at the Genealogy Gems YouTube channel. And if you've watched me or listened to me for a while, you know, I always give you my honest opinion. And I am going to show you my best strategies for getting the most out of whatever tool we're talking about. So today it's archives.com and let's get started. Here we are at archives.com. Now this is a subscription website like some of the other uh, genealogy records websites out there. Uh, you can certainly try the free trial and I would recommend that. Do the one week free trial and just get your bearings. Make sure that it has the kind of stuff that you want and that you're looking for and that you like the way it works. I think you will. Uh, it's a very nice user interface. So do the one week free trial and then the good news and really the differentiating factor with archives.com is it's so affordable. It is a fraction of the cost of websites like Ancestry.com and MyHeritage and some of the other really big genealogy records websites. So that makes it perfect, one, if you're a beginner, because you're not having to put a lot of money out there to just kind of see if, if this is your thing, if you like doing family history. But if you've been doing it for a while and you really would like to add another subscription website to your options, but you don't want to break the bank doing it, then the, the price point on this is just perfect for you. So they'll uh, tell you what the current price is when you do the, fam the free trial. And I think you'll find that it is a fraction of what you would pay at other websites. Okay, so uh, the main focus of archives.com is indeed genealogical records. And I will show you as we go through the searching process, how it actually kind of guides you through the research process. So you don't, it really kind of gives you a pathway to get there. Um, they are owned by Ancestry. And so you might be wondering if you do happen to have an Ancestry website subscription, do you really need archives? Well, they're owned by Ancestry, but they're totally separate uh, websites and subscriptions. There is some overlap. So you're going to find some records like you can see they're talking about the 1950 census here on the homepage. You're certainly going to find that over at Ancestry and many other places. But with all websites, you'll find that they have some of their own collections that are unique to them. So if you're adding on to other subscriptions that you already have, do that browsing during the seven day free trial to make sure that they've got some extras and things that are really going to benefit you. But if you're a beginner, Starting here is really a great place to go because it's going to give you all the basics that you need. Now, one of the first things you're going to want to do is take a look and see what kind of collections they have. And uh, there's a really easy way to do that. Here on the home page, we're going to go up to the menu and click collections. And this is going to take you to their collections page. Now on the show notes for this video, we always have the, the notes of all the things I'm talking about typed up for you on our website. And if you're a premium member, you can download that as a cheat sheet, which is a nice bonus. So if you're watching on the Genealogy Gems YouTube channel, just go down in the video description, you'll find a link to the show notes. But the page here is archives.com slash collections. And again, we got to it through the main menu. They have over 650 record collections. And like I said, that encompasses billions of records. So this is a nice place to do some browsing. It would take you a while, obviously, if you were trying to scroll through here and look at everything. But you don't need to do that because you've got this nice search feature over on the left hand side. So here we can browse, if you will, or kind of dig into these collections using keywords. If there's something specific you're looking for, like immigration, or um, death records, that type of thing. You can also specifically look at record type. And I would recommend just take a second, click the, the down arrow, 
And this is going to give you a really nice quick summary of the kinds of records that they have. So this should be your first thing that you do when you get your free trial. Come over here and you'll see they've got all vital records. They break them out into birth, death, and marriage, divorce. Uh, they have family trees and, and all types of things. And then also by country. So this comes in really handy if you want to expand beyond, let's say you're here in the United States like I am, uh, you're going to want to be able to expand beyond that and search for records unique perhaps to your ancestors' country of origin. But you don't want to be spending money or searching if they don't have what you need. So again, take a quick look. Here's the list. If you don't see the country that you need, like I don't see France, so if you're looking for French records, this may not be the right site for you. But certainly the US, the UK, uh, they break it down into England and Wales and Scotland, um, and Panama. So, and I think they're adding all the time. So this list could expand, but right now this is it. So take your first step here at archives.com on the collections page. Okay, let's get to the fun stuff. We're gonna be searching for records. Now in genealogy, we start with ourselves and we work backwards. I think a really nice place to start is with your grandparents. These are people who you probably could learn some more about, but you may already have some good working information like names, when they were born or when they died, where they lived and died. So that's gonna be really helpful in running your search. Um, so, and even if they're still alive, that's okay, because Archives has a lot of records that cover living people as well. It does a really nice job of that. In fact, as I recall back when they first launched the website, before Ancestry ever bought them, they were kind of focused on more 20th century records. So that's kind of another bonus to this website. So we're going to start with a particular person in mind. Uh, so if you have a grandparent's name, I'm actually going to start with a great grandparent. And we have a couple of different ways we can do that. We can do it right here on the home page. So you can see, I can put in a first and middle name, last name, which is required, the surname, and a location that kind of narrows things down. You can also get there through search. Now, this is a really quick and dirty, let's get to it. You know, I've got a name and I've got a, a place. That works pretty well if, if you have a pretty unique name. But I would recommend just start with advanced search. Two ways to get there. You can click the advanced search link here right next to this simple search engine, or we can come up and actually just click search in the menu. And that's going to take us to the advanced search page. And I think this is always a great place to go because one, you've got more options, but two, you're also going to see more about what options you could work with. And every search is a little bit different. In my case, I'm looking for a great grandparent. Um, his name is Conover Burkett. So I would type his name in here, Conover. I don't know his middle name. I don't know if he had a middle name. Burkett. And that gets me started. Now, there aren't a lot of people with the first name Conover. And so that kind of makes him unique just out of the gate. If he was just John Burkett or John Smith, you know, something much more um, common, then we're going to probably need to add more information. So one of my first tips would be, be narrow enough in your search that you can find what you want. Be broad enough that you don't cut things out of the search results that you would have liked to have seen. So let's look here. Um, I could do Burkett. I'm not going to click exact because I've seen Burkett with a extra T on the end, and even TTE on the end. So why not go ahead and go for, you know, just the one T, but give myself a little bit of room to see the others as well. A location, he lived both in Ohio and Indiana. So I don't want to restrict yet. I want to take a look and see what I'm going to get just with his name. And that's another tip. Don't be afraid to search multiple times. In fact, I think it's a really good idea. That way you make sure you didn't miss something and you didn't spend too much time on a huge list that you didn't need to. So let's click search now. Now, at first glance, this might look overwhelming, 40,000 plus results. But 
Here's my next tip. When you get a search results list here at Archives, first thing I would do if I'm getting a name match, which I am, look, I've got a couple here, perfect matches. I'm going to scroll down. I'm, I'm just glancing here. Oh, I see one with two T's. Ah, I suspected that. And now here, James C. Burkett. So understand that when you're looking at your search results, it's the best one at the top and you scroll backward. So while it may have said I gave you 40,000 results, the truth is only about nine of them are even close in their matching. And then we move into completely different other first names. So I really don't need to do a lot more exact matching because I think I've, they've shown me that just on this one page, I'm getting all the ones that are even close, whether it's uh, the same spelling on the surname or not. So this is really nice. And let's click through and look at a record. Uh, this first one is the 1880 U.S. Federal Census. Gotta love the census because it shows us our ancestors in group settings, in groups, the head of the household, typically the husband, the, the wife, and the kids. Even if they had uh, people living in the house with them, like boarders or cousins or aunts or uncles, they're going to show up there too. Uh, this is a really nice user interface to take a look at these records. We can zoom in really easily. If you're an Ancestry user, this is going to feel kind of similar in the way that it works. They're highlighting here uh, which family that he would have been a part of. And interesting, in this case, in 1880, my great-grandfather isn't a child, isn't the head of household. He's the nephew of Jacob Burkett. I've already got an extension onto my family tree now. I know that Jacob Burkett um, is most likely the brother of Conover's father. So we've got some fun things to pursue. At the top, you'll notice I can print this. I can download it to my computer, uh, save this record. When you're saving the record, you're saving it onto their website because you're signed into your account. I would really recommend, and this is another big tip of mine, download the records to your own computer. Because after you no longer have a subscription to a website, if you're just saving records, you don't have access to them anymore. But if you're downloading them to your computer, you always have access to the records that are the basis for how you built out your family tree. And I regularly go back and look at old records to double check things or to share it with somebody else. So do it now while you have your subscription or your free trial, and you'll always have the backup to show how you learned a little more information about this ancestor. Okay, let's head back to the home page. We'll click back. In fact, I think it'll take us back to our search page. Again, if you need to get to search, just click search in the menu. That's going to get you to the advanced search. I'm going to do that right here. Remember I said that the nice thing about the way that this website is set up is that it kind of guides you through the process. And you'll see that here on the advanced search page. So make note, you'll see all records over here on the left. And then it tells you we've got census, vital records, death, birth, marriage, and divorce. Now, this is the core of your genealogy research. So the first thing you need to do is, remember, starting from yourself and going backward, if you're working on a, a grandparent, we're going to get their death record first. That's the last thing that happened to them. And then you're going to get their marriage, and then you're going to get their birth. So now you've kind of created a framework for who this person is. How do you fill in the gaps? with the census. So this first section of the advanced search page is what you need to do really good genealogy research. The US federal census was published every 10 years. And so uh, from 1790 all the way up to present, you can get access to them up to 1950 currently. And so that's going to help fill in the gaps between birth, marriage and death. From there, one of the best type of records you can get are military records. This has oftentimes a lot of great information, puts your ancestor in historical context, and it's a very popular record group for genealogists. So they give you that and immigration and passenger lists. That kind of rounds out this core group of records because obviously we're hoping that we might find the ancestor who was the first one to arrive here in the U.S., How'd they get here and where'd they come from? 
We're going to get that through passenger lists and immigration records. Then you want to expand out a little bit. Now, remember I said that they have a nice focus on living people. So you can run a living people search. Maybe you're putting together a, a high school reunion. This would be a great place to go. But how do we fill in even more of the lifetime of this ancestor we're searching on? Well, city directories are awesome because oftentimes they are published sometimes even just yearly, which means you could go year by year filling in where they lived and when they disappear from a town. Oh, now we know we need to go somewhere else and look and compare that to the U.S. federal census. So city and telephone directories are a fantastic way to fill in the gaps even further. Now from there, trees. Now this is your tree, this is other people's trees. So you're wondering, why wouldn't I just go to trees first? Maybe somebody else already has this ancestor in their tree. Well, we don't know yet if they know what they're doing either. <laughs> so their research may not be as top notch as yours is going to be because you're watching genealogy gems. So I think they got this in the right order. Now we're going to go and check. We know from our research and our sources who this person is. Let's go see. Do we see them in other trees? And how do those trees stack up in their accuracy? It's a great resource. It's a great set of clues. It isn't the first place you go to do good genealogical research. And then from there, we can expand out to the fun stuff. Newspapers, one of my favorite record types. Um, it is a secondary source. It's not a source that's giving you information straight from the horse's mouth. This is not your ancestor writing about themselves in the newspaper. So we have to take it with a grain of salt, just like we do with the news today. And but gosh, there are so many fascinating things that can be found in newspapers. Check out the links below in the, in the video description for some of my newspaper videos. I go in depth on how to dig up some of the best stuff you'll ever find on your family. And you'd be amazed. Your family probably was in the newspaper more often than you think. But they have newspapers here. You can use a lot of those techniques that I talk about in my videos here at archives.com as well. They also have digitized books and links to books, um, specifically obituaries and memory pages. And they have this surname histories. This is just kind of more background filler information. So this is really a wonderful kind of rounded out collection of records for the beginner, but also for those of you who have been at this for a while or you're trying to get back into genealogy, you took a break for a while, it's going to help fill in the gaps and hopefully really give you new records that you haven't seen before. Now, before I let you go to go dig into archives.com yourself, let's head back to trees. Um, we saw that in the list of record types. Click trees in the menu and you can create your own tree here. It's a really nice, simple user interface to build out a family tree online. Now, I just want to say it's, in my opinion, the very best place to build your family tree is in genealogy database software that you use on your own computer. That way you always have control of it, no matter how long you have a subscription to any website. But if you're just getting started, this is a great way to get your feet wet. Um, also, if you've already created your tree on your own computer, then you can probably export it as a GEDCOM. That is a universal file type for genealogy family trees specifically. And if you export that GEDCOM, you could actually upload it here at archives and then work with it from there. Now, Again, since this isn't what I call my master family tree, that's the one on my computer. The reason I would do this tree is to generate discoveries and connections and, and you know clues. Use it as a way to generate hints. So check it out. I'm going to close this and you can see it's really easy to create your tree. You start with yourself, add your parents, your grandparents, and you are off to the races. You can also upload your GEDCOM file. Um, the nice thing about this tree at Archives is as soon as you get this set up, really, as soon as you start searching for records and looking at records, you're going to start generating discoveries. And um, their AI, you know, running in the background is going to do this for you. It's going to create um, a way to find records even more quickly than digging for them yourselves. 
it's going to base it on your tree and the kinds of records that you're already looking at and spending time with. So it's just another way to kind of speed up the process and make genealogy easier than it's ever been before. So what are you waiting for? I would recommend go and check out archives.com. Uh, get digging into it, see if it's right for you. And most importantly, head down to the video description, click on the link to the show notes page. You'll get all the details on this video over at my website and premium members can get that downloadable cheat sheet, which is available on all the content that we do, whether it's videos or podcasts. Thanks for listening, my friend. I'll talk to you soon.